Cosplay, a portmanteau of costume play, is an activity and performance art in which participants called cosplayers wear costumes and fashion accessories to represent a specific character. I haven't really talked about this on my channel yet, but folks who've been following my stuff for a while may know that, in addition to everything else I do, I'm also a member of the cosplay community. I've made dozens of costumes over the years from anime, video games, and even some live action series. And while I mostly did it for fun, I've competed in contests before and even have a few craftsmanship awards under my belt. While I've mostly stepped away from the hobby these days and don't do nearly as much of it as I did in the past, it's still a hobby very near and dear to my heart. And considering it was such a big part of my life for the better part of a decade, you know I have a lot of stories to tell, including the time that I ripped my pants in front of hundreds of people, but we'll get to that later. So today, let's talk about cosplay, how I got into it, the good sides, the bad sides, the horror stories, the blood, sweat, and tears that go into making yourself look like an anime character, and everything else that goes along with it. But first, real quick, it's time for Hey Star, What You Drawin'. The art in the background is a set of stickers and a mini print I designed for my webcomic Cast Off's 2023 Mail Club set. You can get the art featured in the video by joining my Patreon before the end of the month. The link is down in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about the characters, a link to my comic is also in the description, so feel free to check that out. When I was about 11 years old, I remember browsing through the aisles of my local Blockbuster video. My mom would sometimes take me there on Friday nights to check out movies or games for me to enjoy over the weekend. The Sailor Moon movies on VHS were among my favorites, and I sometimes even got the same one multiple weeks in a row. I definitely got chewed out for that occasionally, but hey, I knew what I liked, and what I liked was Sailor Moon. Jupiter is best girl, by the way. At some point during one of our blockbuster trips, however, something different caught my eye. On one of the magazine racks near the front of the store was a publication I had never seen before, a glossy magazine with a big illustration of Eternal Sailor Moon plastered right on the front cover. Naturally, it caught my eye, and with a little persuasion, my mom agreed to buy it for me. At home that night, I flipped through the magazine. The main focus of the issue was talking about the end of the original Sailor Moon anime, with a few screenshots from the final episode, plus a few other articles about other anime. And at the back of the magazine was a small section talking about anime conventions, featuring photos of some cosplayers from a recent local event. Cosplayers dressed up in Trigun, Kingdom Hearts, and Final Fantasy X outfits, lovingly put together and enshrined forever in slightly blurry photos taken in flash photography on primitive digital cameras. This was the first time I was ever introduced to the concept of cosplay, and I was immediately enthralled. People made costumes and dressed up like anime characters? Any character they wanted? I could dress like Sailor Jupiter? Immediately, I had a new life goal. I wanted to go to anime conventions, and I wanted to cosplay too. There was only one problem. Well, several actually, but the biggest one was... This happened in the early 2000s. In the modern day, getting started in cosplay can be as easy as buying a pre-made Genshin Impact costume online, throwing it on, and blam! Cosplay done. But in the pre-social media days, cosplays were, with very few exceptions, crafted by hand with very limited materials. You couldn't really buy pre-made cosplays or pre-styled wigs, and we didn't have specialty cosplay fabrics or tools to make crafting them any easier. So that was already a huge hurdle, but combine that with the fact that I had basically no crafting experience, didn't know how to sew, didn't know how to do much of anything that cosplay required, and you have a recipe for a sad baby star who wanted to make her cosplay dreams a reality so bad, but had no idea where to start. However, this little spark of interest in the hobby would, with time, ignite the flames of my eventual cosplay obsession that would ultimately change my life forever. After my initial discovery of cosplay, I went a few years itching to go to an anime con, but having no money to do so and no cosplays to wear either. I brainstormed ideas of the types of costumes I'd love to make and how I would make them, but as I had no idea what I was doing, these ideas were usually… bad. One particularly vivid memory I have was wanting to make an Azumanga Daio uniform and planning on making the little rigid sleeve cuffs out of index cards with the lines drawn on them with Sharpie. Uh, yeah, this was the level of crafting ineptitude we were dealing with back in the day. It's horrifying. I spent my entire middle school life daydreaming about the day I'd finally be able to go to an anime convention but I was never able to go to the local con featured in that magazine article because it ended up getting shut down before I was ever able to attend. 
But a few years later, during my freshman year of high school, I was made aware of a brand new convention starting up in town, IkiCon. The stars had finally aligned. I was going to an anime convention and I was determined to cosplay. So what cosplay did I do? Well, around this time, a friend and I were very into a little series called Kaleida Star, an anime following a girl who joins a circus that's basically anime Cirque du Soleil. In one of the early episodes, there's a story focused on a character named Rosetta who does Diablo juggling, and this friend and I had seen this anime, thought it was cool, and then we were actually able to join a Diablo club at our high school. So with that fresh in our minds, the choice was simple. We wanted to cosplay the Diablo battle performance outfits from Kaleida Star, cosplay as the two main characters, Sora and Rosetta, and bring our actual Diablos with us to the con to show off a little. It was perfect. Except these outfits were pretty complicated. And the same roadblocks from before still applied. I had never sewn anything before and couldn't just buy a costume online. But while I couldn't sew, I did have members of my family who could. And with a little bit of begging and prodding and bartering, I convinced a relative who lived in town to help me put together my first cosplay. My friend and I bought the fabrics ourselves, and considering we knew nothing about sewing, the materials we picked were, uh, pretty terrible. An awkward combination of the cheapest broadcloth money could buy, that awful shiny cheapy satin, and some random peach skin fabric that frayed like a nightmare if you even looked at it wrong. We were going based on colors more than actual materials. And because we didn't have a lot of time before the con, we had to skip out on basically all the accessories and even parts of the actual outfits themselves. And of course, no wigs. And I can't remember if we just went with our normal hair or if we spray dyed our hair the right colors for the day. In short, these cosplays were pretty terrible. And before you ask, no photos exist of these outfits. And even if we did have photos, I would not be showing them because no. <laughs> but despite how bad our cosplays were, we still got recognized once or twice at the con and had a great time tooling around the tiny hotel lobby with other anime fans. I had my first taste of anime conventions and I was hooked. Over the next few years, I didn't do much cosplay, but I still attended several conventions. I went back to IkiCon every year and even attended a few smaller shows that popped up around that time. The breakthrough in my cosplay hobby happened my senior year of high school when I was finally able to take an elective class that taught us how to use sewing machines and do some basic garment construction. And once the limitation of not being able to sew was no longer an issue, I threw myself into making cosplays like nobody's business. I used my final project for that class as an excuse to make my first ever cosplay I made entirely on my own. Dawn from Pokemon Platinum, using the cheapest fleece and broadcloth money could buy. I wore it to IkiCon that winter, again with no wig, but I, I didn't care. It was my cosplay that I made all by myself, and from here on out, I would not be stopped. Once I went off to college that summer, I started on my next cosplay, Pick Up from How to Train Your Dragon. I was a bit obsessed with the movie and had made a giant plushie of Toothless and decided it would be fun to make a Hiccup cosplay to go with it. I made the tunic out of flannel and hot glued some leather cording onto the sleeves. I made a fur vest by just haphazardly cutting a yard of fur into approximately the correct shape. I made boots with felt and a cheap pair of flip flops for the base. I threw on a pair of pants that were roughly the correct color. And I bought a wig from a local costume shop in town. I wore that costume to the Halloween dance at school that year. And then also to the first college con I ever went to, Momocon in Atlanta, Georgia, back when it was a free-to-attend college-run convention. Oh man, the memories. I actually have a lot of really good memories of this cosplay. I would dress as Hiccup and carry my giant toothless plushie around with me, which got a lot of attention, especially from younger kids. I got approached by parents with young kids a lot, asking if their kid could see the toothless plushie or if I'd take a picture with them. It was really sweet, and honestly, those are some of my favorite cosplay memories from back then. About halfway through my first year in college, I ended up joining the cosplay club with a few friends, where I was introduced to the concept of group cosplays for the first time. Cosplaying a character by yourself is fun, but getting a bunch of friends together to cosplay the same series can be a super fun and exciting experience. The club was pretty big at the time. We had about 20, 30 people showing up for every meeting, and we wanted our first big group cosplay to be something where everyone could be included. We ended up taking a vote, and the series we decided to cosplay for an upcoming con was Avatar The Last Airbender. 
And this group turned out amazingly. We had over 20 people total, including the entire main cast and almost a dozen minor characters. We had all of Team Avatar, we had the hippies from the Secret Tunnel episode, we had Dai Li agents, we had the Earth King, our Aang was actually 12 and shaved his head for his cosplay, like the whole nine yards. When we were all gathered together at the con, we were getting stopped to get pictures taken of our group and we ended up stuck in place for almost an hour while people kept coming to take pictures of us. When we had to move somewhere as a group, we'd go single file and sing the secret tunnel song to keep track of where the rest of the group was in the crowded convention. It was a pretty awesome time. For this group, I actually ended up cosplaying Azula, and we had a lot of fun with the outfit. It was my first time working with faux leather, and I also dyed some fabric to get the right color for her sleeves. The one tricky thing with this costume was her hair. This was in 2011, and lace front wigs, which let you do semi-realistic looking hairlines, were even more expensive then than they are now. And me, being a poor college student, thought to myself, what if I just dyed my hair black instead? So we did. The night before the con, my friends sat me in the hotel bathtub, we used two bottles of box dye, and ruined several hotel towels dyeing my hair black. Yes, we were those people at the anime convention. Apologies to that hotel, I promise we never did it again. That I can remember. So I did my Azula cosplay and then had black hair for the next few weeks before it all finally washed out. Also, <laughs> here's a fun side tangent from our Avatar cosplay escapades. Because we were all poor college students, we sometimes had to get really resourceful with our materials to avoid breaking the bank on these costumes. For example, our Sokka made their necklace out of dominoes, and my good friend and college roommate Sarah made our Earth King's necklace out of... Gumballs. Yes, gumballs. They were the right size and the right color, and they could be easily strung onto a necklace, and you know what? It worked! But not long after that con, Sarah and I were sitting in our dorm together and noticed a weird smell had suddenly appeared in our space. It wasn't a bad smell. In fact, it was almost a good smell, like a candle, but it was very noticeable, and we couldn't figure out where the hell it was coming from until... That night, when we were both trying to sleep, my eyes just snapped open and I said out loud into the dark, Sarah, I know what the smell is. It's gumballs. And sure enough, the Earth King necklace that was hanging on the costume rack by our front door had started melting, causing the sugary smell to stink up our room. We got up and chucked it in our mini fridge to make the smell go away for the time being and ended up throwing it out the next day. And that's the story of the weirdest material we've ever used for a cosplay. So after our cosplay club's avatar group went so well, we started planning for our next group. And well, we may have gotten in a little bit over our heads for this next one. See, while our avatar group went off relatively smoothly, this was largely in part because the outfits were simple and easy to make even for folks with relatively low crafting skills. But then we got the collective ego boost from that project and thought, hey, let's do something bigger. And we voted that our next group cosplay project would be Eternal Sonata, a JRPG with lots of really cool and very complicated character designs. We were going to have the full main cast and several minor characters and everything was going to be great. Until it wasn't. As time went by and the convention we were planning on doing the group for got closer and closer, people started dropping out or ghosting us entirely. We went from a full cast roster to just a handful of characters, and those who were still around were getting put through hell trying to get their cosplays finished on top of school and final projects. I've always been pretty good at time management and was able to wrap up my falsetto cosplay right after finals week and about a week before the convention, but the rest of the folks in our group weren't so lucky. With less than a week left before Momocon that year, a group of friends and I spent the next several days in the hell that is cosplay crunch, working tirelessly on the remaining cosplays for hours and hours, sleeping in short bursts before returning to work sewing, painting, wig styling, and everything else. By the time the actual convention rolled around, we were still finishing cosplays in people's hotel room on Friday evening, trying to get everything done before the cosplay contest on Saturday. And while we did manage to get the outfits done, they were, uh, not good. 
very slapdash, very messy in places, and we definitely didn't come close to winning anything besides a pity card in that year's contest. I don't even really have any good pictures of our group. The whole thing was such a chaotic mess, I swore off doing Con Crunch ever again. Except for one other time. Now again, I don't talk about this too much on this channel, but one thing that pushed me even deeper into cosplay was getting into idol anime. I fell deep into the Idolmaster series around the time Sarah showed me the original 2011 anime, and from there I went on and got hooked on watching videos from the games as well. There were some cute outfits in the anime, but the games were a goldmine of adorable costumes, and I loved watching videos from the game to see the different outfit styles and daydream about how I'd actually make them myself. One of my favorite outfits was called Change to My Color, an outfit that started as a blue and black striped dress, only to change color halfway through the song to match the character's image color. Insert blue and black or white and gold dress joke here. Ha ha ha, yes, it's very funny. Anyway, I loved these outfits so much and decided at some point I wanted to cosplay them. And because I was super extra, I decided I wanted to make some kind of quick change dress so I could do the dance as a skit at the con and do the quick change halfway through the song like in the game. I was super excited and I aimed to work on the costume for the few weeks of my holiday vacation leading up to IkiCon around New Year's. And at first, everything was going great. I found the materials I wanted to use, planned the patterns, and started working on the colored layer, only to have a lot of trouble figuring out the quick change elements. My original plan was to have the colored layer underneath the blue and black layer, then have the top part of the blue and black layer fold under and turn into the skirt for the colored second layer. I didn't want to strip off the top layer and throw it across stage, I wanted both layers to be part of the outfit. And this was kind of doomed from the start. It meant I had to fit the entire skirt for the second layer, which was a giant circle skirt by the way, folded up and fitted inside the top half of the blue and black dress, which made my torso look really frumpy and bunched up. And the transition never really worked, no matter how long I slaved away at it. About a week before the con, I had a slight mental breakdown over it, where I was just sitting on the floor of my room, frustrated and tearing up over the hurricane of fabric that was my bedroom, until my mom came and talked some sense into me by saying, why don't you just not do the quick change? It was sad, but she was right. The colorful layer of the outfit I could finish and wear on its own, and I could still compete with it that way. And because of some kind of file mix-up, the con never got the audio for my skit anyway, so I ended up just competing with a regular walk-on. Walk on stage, do a few poses to show off the outfit, and walk off. And even though I didn't make the quick change work, I still ended up winning a judge's award for that costume, my first award ever. It made all the hard work feel worth it, and I wore that costume to almost every con I went to for the next year or so. Still one of my favorite things I've ever made. Now, I have a lot of other cosplay stories, but for the sake of time, I can trim them down into fairly short summaries, so let's go over a couple highlights from my cosplay career. I mentioned my love of Idolmaster earlier, but the stripy quick change dress wasn't the only one I did. I also did these sequined nightmares in not one, but two different color variations, which meant that I sewed Makoto's sequined nightmare cowboy yeehaw ab window bodysuit with chaps not once, but twice. If you have never sewn sequin confetti dot fabric, you will never know the pain that was these outfits. It is a nightmare. Ugh, I'm getting war flashbacks. At one point, a small group of friends and I did an Overwatch cosplay group, and I did a gender bent McCree cosplay because I liked his outfit, and I was from Texas, and I thought it was funny. And then, when I was making the cosplay, I almost set my bathroom on fire. I was trying to burn the edges of the poncho to make it look weathered, and then the uh, poncho properly caught fire for a couple seconds and burned more than I wanted it to. Um, and then I just stared at it for a couple seconds before dropping it in my bathtub and extinguishing the flames. You can actually see the burnt part of the poncho if you look at pictures of this cosplay from the back. Uh, oops, that was fun. Um, also, for that same group, Sarah cosplayed Hanzo and we took shippy pictures. Mikanzo fans, enjoy. <laughs> I cosplayed Frey from Rune Factory 4 at one point, but I couldn't find a pigtail wig in the right color, so I hand dyed a white wig green with ink and stained our apartment balcony green. 
And despite the fact that I rinsed the excess dye out of it pretty thoroughly, when I actually wore this costume to a con, the wig still rubbed green dye off onto the whole costume, so I only got to wear it once before I had to throw it out. The best part is that the dye didn't even come out the right shade of green anyway, so the whole experiment was a complete failure and I'm never messing with wigs again. Yay! Um, another time I cosplayed Ring a Bell from Bravely Default and I made a prop journal with all the entries from the game written inside it. Because I love Ring a Bell, he's my stupid son, and I needed to be extra if I was gonna cosplay him. I've done a couple of other smaller Bravely Default cosplays since then, but my boy Ring a Bell's is the nearest and dearest to my heart even if I can't sit when wearing it because of his dumb butt laps. What are these? What are these things supposed to be? If y'all remember the giant plushie of Garrus Vicarian I made back in my Weirdest Commission Story video, I actually did a casual Commander Shepard cosplay with the N7 hoodie at San Japan one year, and I carried Garrus around with me. That was an interesting conversation starter for the entire con. At one point, my brother expressed a casual interest in cosplaying with me, and I ended up making Tim two cosplays. The first one was Krom from Fire Emblem, which was a bit of a nightmare. I'm not going to go into it, but what the f*** are these things on his legs? And why? And the second one was Solaire from Dark Souls, which to this day is one of my favorite things I've ever made, ever. I made the moss cape with brushed out yarn, made the chainmail underlayer by taking an old sweater and sweatpants, disassembling them, sewing them back together with a layer of stiff tool attached, and spray painting the whole thing silver, which worked surprisingly well. I made the helmet with craft foam and some very cool hammered metal spray paint I found, and spent days weathering the crap out of the whole thing to make it look grungy and gross like in the game. I even included a holster on the belt so he could carry around a bottle of Sunny D at the con, or, you know, the memes. Despite how much I love cosplay, I was never really good at props, but the one prop I went super hard making was the flaming raging poison sword of doom I made to go along with my Taco Adventure Zone cosplay. I wanted it to light up, so I had a friend help me set up the electronics and program some LEDs so it could not only light up and flicker like a proper flame sword, but also have a chasing rainbow pattern because I thought it was funny and extra. I mainly made my taco cosplay for a small Taz group my friends and I had planned, but I also finished it in time to take it to a Taz live show. I wore my taco cosplay to the show, and I had the sword lit up and strapped to my back, and I got a round of applause from the rest of the audience when my group and I were trying to find our seats. It was very freaking cool. Also, fun fact, I burned a hole in the carpet of my apartment building working on this sword. Oops, we love causing accidental property damage with cosplay. And yes, this was the same apartment where I almost set it on fire doing weathering on a McCree cosplay. I think this apartment was just cursed. Or maybe I was cursed, who knows. Anyway, moral of the story, don't use a heat gun near carpet. There are a few other costumes I've made that I'm really proud of that don't really have any big stories attached to them, my favorite being the Monster Hunter cosplay I made for a group back in 2016. I did the G-Rank Ash Ketchawacha armor set and totally chose it because I loved how it looked and also because I didn't have to make any actual armor for it. I am terrible at making armor. Please don't make me do armor. It is my enemy and I hate it. Plus, when my friends and I wore these costumes for Anime Weekend Atlanta, we ended up ditching the Friday of the con to go to a Monster Hunter event that was conveniently happening within the city, and we had a whole lot of fun hanging out at a restaurant and playing the game with other Monster Hunter fans. So I am, as always, saving the best story for last. The year was 2013. I was still deep in my Idolmaster obsession, Momocon was fast approaching, and I wanted to spend the entire weekend in Idolmaster cosplay. My first one was a casual outfit I put together with thrifted clothes. My second one was a more obscure outfit that was partially thrifted. And the third was my favorite of the weekend, an outfit from the game called Street Hopper, which was a crop top shirt with cute shorts matching each character's image color. I figured that this would be a relatively simple outfit to put together and made almost the entire thing from scratch, modifying a plain t-shirt into a crop top, painting the symbols on and adding the bias tape trim and making the shorts from scratch. The craftsmanship wasn't the best, and I was still relatively new at sewing, but it looked pretty good and I didn't have any major problems putting it together. Surely nothing could go wrong. This is foreshadowing, by the way. 
Anyway, I finished my cosplays just in time for Momocon to roll around. I spent the entire day Saturday in my little street hopper cosplay running around and shopping and going to panels and going to an Idolmaster meetup and watching some friends in the cosplay contest that night. And as my friends and I were exiting the cosplay contest surrounded by hundreds of other people all ambling around at this crowded convention, I reach around to grab something out of my shoulder bag and notice that something is wrong. I turn to look, time stops for a moment, and I have three realizations all in sequence. Number one, the inseam of my shorts has managed to rip. And not just a small rip, a big one. It was less like I ripped the inseam and more like the entire inseam was gone. Like completely unraveled. There was no inseam anymore. I was not wearing shorts. I was wearing two leg tubes attached at a belt. Number two, this belt, the only thing that was holding my pants up at this point, was made out of an extremely flimsy craft store ribbon and held shut by a small piece of Velcro in the front. Basically, the only thing separating me from completely losing my pants in the middle of a crowded convention center was a piece of Velcro about the size of a quarter. Number three, I had been walking all over, all around the con for the entire day and had no idea when the rip had occurred. I could have ripped them just now, or I could have been walking around with moderately disassembled shorts since 10 a.m. that morning. Commence panic mode. As soon as I realized what was happening, I sped over to the closest wall, put my back against an unoccupied corner, and held my bag in front of my rapidly deteriorating shorts. My friends walked over, not sure what was going on, and I quickly told them that my cosplay was literally coming apart at the seams and I needed to get myself back to the hotel room to change as soon as possible. The problem was, we weren't staying at the convention hotel. We were staying at another hotel about a quarter mile away and nobody I was with had anything I could change into in the meantime. My friends and I considered this predicament for a few moments before they finally figured out what to do. As if they were my secret service agents, my friends formed a protective circle around me to hide my wardrobe malfunction from the rest of the con while I held onto my messed up shorts for dear life, holding the inseam together at the front as inconspicuously as I possibly could and using my shoulder bag to cover the backside. And we walked like that shuffling in a weird little protective people orb the entire quarter mile back to our hotel. And when we made it back, I very quickly changed into proper clothes and I never wore that cosplay again. Except not really because I fixed the shorts and wore them for several events after that, but whatever. So what exactly caused the pants to rip open in the first place you might be wondering? Well, easy answer, bad sewing. More specifically, the fact that I was still such a sewing newbie, I didn't know to finish my seams. Finishing your seams basically means doing something to the inside of your garment to make it so your seams stay together and your fabrics don't fray after you've sewn them together. There's a few different methods for this. Surging your seams like most mass-produced garments do, adding a lining to the garment, doing a zigzag stitch across the raw edge to keep it from fraying, which is a little low tech, but it works if you don't have a serger using an adhesive like fray check to stop the cut edges of fabric from fraying, using pinking shears to make specific cuts that will stop fabric from fraying most of the time, any number of those things. You know what kind of seam finishing I did for these shorts? Nothing, nada. The entire inside was a bunch of raw seams begging to fall apart over the course of a long con day. And that's exactly what happened. Over the course of that Saturday, the fabric at the inseam must have started unraveling as I walked, taking the inseam with it and causing me to accidentally flash my underoos to an entire anime convention for who knows how long. And that's why we finish our seams, kids. Now, like I said at the start of this video, I've mostly stepped away from cosplay as a hobby. I did some of my best work around 2017, right before I moved overseas, and didn't do any cosplay at all while I was living in Japan. And when I came back two years later, COVID happened and shut down conventions for a couple years. And when conventions came back, I was more focused on my career and doing Artist Alley rather than cosplaying at cons. 
I still love cosplay, but you could say that my crafting motivation has been ground down pretty significantly by everything that's happened in the last few years. The last big cosplay I made was Kifri from Witch Hat Atelier, so I could wear it with some of my Atlanta friends, but even that felt like pulling teeth trying to get it done. I'd still like to cosplay for conventions when I'm not sitting behind my table the entire time, but I don't go to many non-work cons these days, which hasn't helped my motivation much. But I still have a few things I'd like to make. I really miss doing idol cosplays, and I have a few more idol master costumes on my want to make list. Mostly this one from the Million Stars mobile game. It's just so freaking cute, and I want to make the little skirt and the little polka dots out of like glitter vinyl, and oh, it's so cute. I also want to do a cosplay of my VTuber at some point. I just think it would be really fun to cosplay my own character, especially because I designed her to look sort of similar to me. And, you know, maybe someday I'll actually do that Sailor Jupiter cosplay the little baby star dreamed of for years. Maybe someday I'll get back into cosplay, but for right now, it's just a nice hobby I get to reminisce about. For now, it's on the back burner, and hopefully someday I'll find the spark of love for it again, but for right now, I think I'll just enjoy the memories I have. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's another reminder that you can get the art featured in this video by joining my Patreon before the end of the month. There's not a whole lot of time left, so make sure to act fast if you're interested. Also, hey, have you read my webcomic cast off yet? There's over 700 pages available for you to read for free right now. Wow. I lovingly made them just for you. And also I'm working on getting my ducks in a row for an eventual physical release. Whoa. Link for that is also in the description. Also, just for fun, if you're watching this and you're also a cosplayer, leave a comment and tell me about your favorite cosplay that you made or a nice cosplay memory you have. And if you aren't, maybe tell me a cosplay you'd like to make someday. I've been out of the community for a bit, but I still enjoy talking to other cosplayers and hearing their stories. It's a lot of fun. All right, that's all I have for this one. I hope you guys are staying cool this summer or warm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, and I will see you next time. Bye!